guys, so a little bit less formal video. Sorry for the noise, it's uh, kind of cold here today. It's about plus two Celsius, which is like probably, I don't know what that'd be, 36 uh, Fahrenheit, so I'm running the heater in here. Uh, I'm gonna make, uh, take a couple of suggestions that I saw. Ziggy and uh, Built Road wrecked it, had uh, offered a suggestion to invert the uh, cutting tool in my uh, radiusing tool and run the lathe backwards. So I'm going to try that out and see how that works. I'll show you the results. I'm not going to do any uh, high speed footage. That stuff takes a long time to edit and uh, render. So I'll show you the results of it and uh, bring you guys back. Okay guys, so uh so far, the results of inverting the tool bit are quite promising. I was a little worried because at that point it was going to be, you know, like essentially the, the, the bulk of the thrust is pushing upwards on this tool, which would tend to lift it off of here, and, you know, all the pressure would be on that nylock that's, you know, holding my threaded rod in the bottom here. But it seems to be doing quite well. I took a 20 thou cut, um, all the chips fell downwards. Uh, there were a few big stringy pieces that wrapped around, but they didn't seem to interfere with the cut, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to take another 20 thou cut and uh, let you guys watch. I just have to remember to turn the lathe on backwards. A couple of times I turned on forwards and couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. <laughs> Okay, so the stuff is stringing up a fair bit, but uh, it did a pretty good cut. You could actually see right there, if you look where my thumbnail is, you can see a little graze mark, and I'm not sure if the bit moved, which I don't think so. I think what happened is one of these little stringy bits here uh, rubbed against, uh, got caught between it and the uh, tool bit. But nevertheless, this has been a lot less uh, hassle, sorry if I'm yelling into the into the camera, but uh, a lot less uh, frustrating than the uh, previous version. So I'm going to go and do a couple more passes and uh, see how that goes. Okay, so I was trying something there, which is I just brought the tool back and forth without uh, without changing the distance, just to see how nice a finish I can get. And you actually can see I'm putting my fingerprints all over it, but I'll clean that up a bit. Actually, looks almost polished. It's actually quite nice. But I had a problem with the um, cross slide. Well, not the cross slide, the compound. I think the compound was getting pushed and was moving because I'm noticing that I'm no longer centered on where I want it to be in the die. Now it's not a big deal, but uh, it's only off by maybe 25 thou. It's, but it's enough for that I can see it. It actually might be more than that, but nevertheless. Yeah, so I did tighten up the gibbs on the, uh, on the compound. And moved it back to where it was supposed to be. 
and I might have to do that again. But in any case, you could see that it was working way, way better. It's still, what was happening now was instead of the small chips getting piled up in there, these big, long, stringy things are getting piled up. But I'm having a, it's a, going a lot faster than it was the other time, so I'm not unhappy with it. So I'm going to keep going, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, follow up at the end. Okay, so that wasn't good. As I brought it back to clear out some of these chips, um, the uh, a chip got caught in here and welded itself to the to the thing there and actually jammed up the lathe. So uh, that wasn't too good. I guess I'm gonna have to be a little bit more clear, careful about that. But yeah, seems to be going quite well. Anyways, I'm going to resume and see how we go. Okay, so that last pass I took was a skim pass, and it came out looking better than the one that I polished with sandpaper, I'd say. Um, so, I'm really happy with that. So I'm evolving my technique. Thanks a lot, guys, uh, for the tips there on uh, on flipping over that bit. That made a big difference. It, it still would, you know, uh, get clogged with some swarf there, but... Uh, it was nowhere near as big a problem as it was, and I got much better surface finish. Uh, probably not, you know, because the tool bit was upside down or anything like that. Probably because I better aligned it on center height, and it was rubbing less. But nevertheless, I am really happy with that result. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece out and face this end off to. Actually, I'll probably have to cut some of it off because it's actually fairly thick. But I'll cut that to width and uh, face that end off. And then I've got another one of these one inch, uh, one inch ish dies. Actually, this one is, looks to me almost, oh, I'll put the end that isn't, hasn't got a label in it on. But this one actually looks like it is bang on an inch in diameter. Because this piece nestles in there quite tightly. I don't see any light below it. Now I can move it a little bit side to side, so it's probably not perfect, but I think it's okay for a tubing die. because The tube will flatten out a little bit and, uh, and spread out. And it shouldn't collapse because of that. But this is actually, once again, another follower. But it occurred to me I might be able to, if I made a third one of these, I could make a ring roller. So that might be the uh, f eventual fate of these if I make a third one of these ones. Nevertheless, I'll pause you guys, and I think I'm going to take this piece out and do some cleanup on it, and uh, call it done. Holy swarf, eh? Wow. Well, I'd say that that one turned out way, way better than that one did. And this one... I tried it with the uh, one inch uh, round stock that I've got 
and uh, it pretty much fit perfectly in there. And uh, that leaves me really, really happy with how this one turned out. Now, like I said, these have only ended up, uh, or were only intended to be uh, test pieces, but uh, I think I'm probably going to use them for something. I still haven't figured out what. I was thinking a ring roller, uh, but uh, we'll see how they go. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut a, well, a lot bigger die, the follow die for the one and a half inch tubing, uh, a little bit larger than these ones, since uh, I need a little more meat in the center. I actually made a mistake yesterday. I think I said that uh, if I cut a one and a half inch uh, uh, pipe into, uh, you know, into one of these little rollers here that it would uh, leave a little bit uh, of meat in the middle and actually no, there wouldn't have been anything left. You would have cut right through to the hole. So anyways, um, I'm going to get to it and uh, make the next uh, one of these things here. So I've got a bigger bit of aluminum stock. Once we try that one out, we're going to do some steel stock as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe and check the description for related links and other information.